This is Ladimat. I'm Kyle Adamant and today we're talking about perfect numbers. And no, I don't mean perfect tens off a diving board or perfect scores on an exam. I'm talking about perfect numbers. So what do we mean by perfect numbers? Well, let's have a look at the number six, which is our first perfect number. What is it about six that makes it so perfect? Well, it's something to do with the factors or divisors of six. These are the numbers that go into six exactly. So we've got one, two, three, and six. And if we discount the number itself, we call these the proper divisors. So we get rid of that, and we're left with the divisors 1, 2, and 3. Add them together, and what do we have? We get 6, which is the number we started with. Now this is exactly what we call a perfect number in maths. Let's have a look at our next perfect number, which is 28. Again, it's to do with the proper divisors of 28. So that's 1, 2, 4, 7, and 14. Add these all together. And hey presto, what do you get? 28 again. So what's the big deal? These seem pretty common. We've got 6 and 28, a couple of fairly low numbers. What makes them so special? Well, the thing is that if you call something perfect, it's probably quite rare. And in maths, the same thing applies here. Even though we've got our two first perfect numbers are very low, the next two in order are 496 and 8,128. So it's quite tricky to find them in general. And in fact, we've only to date found 50 of these perfect numbers. We don't know if we're ever going to find any more. And we still don't know yet whether that actually is an odd perfect number. However, we have checked every single odd number with up to 1,500 digits. So it's looking very unlikely. And if you want to find one, you're going to have to start looking from there. So for now, all we have is these 50 even perfect numbers. And now we're going to find out what makes them even more special, even more perfect and why the prime suspects have something to do with it. Now remember, a prime number is one that has exactly two factors. It's only divisible by one and itself. And we know an awful lot about primes, mainly because they are the building blocks of the mathematical world. And there was a particularly interesting piece of work done by a French monk in the 17th century. That chap was called Marin Mersenne, and we now give his name to a special type of prime number. So a Mersenne prime is a prime number that can be written as one less than a power of two. So that means it has the form two to the power of n minus one, where n is also some prime number. To get a better idea of what these Mersenne primes look like, let's take a look at the first few examples. So for each of our first few primes, we're gonna work out this formula and see what that gives us. So we've got our first prime is two, two to the power of two minus one, two squared minus one, that's four minus one, which is three. And 3 is a prime number, so there we have it, our first Mersenne prime. Now 2 to the power of 3 minus 1, that's 8 minus 1, which is 7. That's also a prime number, so this is looking good so far. 2 to the power of 5 is 32, minus 1 is 31, which is also prime. And 2 to the power of 7 is 128, with a bit more brain power, minus 1, and that's 127, which is in fact also prime. So it's looking quite good. It's looking so far like every prime number is giving us a special one of these Mersen primes. However, we get to the next one along and unfortunately it breaks down there. 2 to the power of 11 is 2048 minus 1 to get 2047. And unfortunately, this number is divisible by 23. So it's in fact not a prime number. So far, we've only managed to find 50 of these Mersen primes. And if that number sounds familiar, then hold on to that thought. This seems a little bit strange because these prime numbers, we've known since the ancient Greek times that there are infinitely many of the prime numbers, but we still don't know for sure whether or not there are infinitely many of these Mersenne primes. One benefit of these Mersenne primes, however, is that among the prime numbers, they tend to be pretty big. So there's an ongoing competition in the maths community to try and find the largest prime number that they can. And so far, the largest one that's been found is a ridiculously big Mersenne prime. In fact, it's written like this. It's 2 to the power of 77 million 217 minus 1. So it's an absolutely ginormous number. It has over 23 million digits, which are calculated. If you write each digit the size of a grain of rice, it would take you absolutely ages to write it. So now, on to the link between perfect numbers and Mersenne primes. So suppose we have a prime number n that gives us a Mersenne prime as so. Now the ancient Greek mathematician Euclid proved that something quite amazing happens when you multiply this Mersenne prime 
by this value here, 2 to the power of n minus 1. So let's give it a go. 2 minus 1 is 1, 2 to the power of 1, well, anything to the power of 1 is just itself, so we get 2 there. 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 squared gives us 4. 5 minus 1 is 4, 2 to the power of 4 gives us 16. And 7 minus 1 is 6, and 2 to the power of 6 is 64. So, as Euclid told us, let's give this a go. Let's multiply these two numbers together. 3 times 2, obviously, is 6. 7 times 4 is 28. Already starting to look a little bit familiar. We've got 31 times 16 is 496. And with a bit more brain power, we get 127 times 64 is 8,128. Hopefully you will have noticed by now that these are in fact the first four perfect numbers. So what you could show is that if you have any Mersenne prime here, you can multiply it by this value and you get a perfect number. Then, over 2,000 years later, the legendary Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler came along and proved that the other way around is also true. So whenever we have an even perfect number down here, we also have a corresponding Mersenne prime from this formula. So that means that if we continue this table on forever, we get exactly the same number of Mersenne primes and even perfect numbers. And since we said earlier, there probably aren't any odd perfect numbers. This means there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between these two special numbers. Now this is quite extraordinary because we define perfect numbers simply as a cool number that has this neat little property about the sum of its factors, but actually it tells us something quite deep and something quite meaningful about the distribution of certain types of prime numbers. So we've opened up a whole new avenue of exploration in mathematics. So there we have it. We've seen perfect numbers, we've seen Merson primes, and we've seen a connection between the two over 2,000 years apart. Now we've only found 50 of these Merson primes so far, and that means we have 50 perfect numbers, and we still don't know for sure whether we're going to find any more of them. Now unfortunately, most of these perfect numbers are a bit too big to be on your lottery ticket or to fit on the back of your football shirt, so they might not ever be your favourite numbers, but they'll always hold a special place in the heart of maths.